Hello there. We're, uh, we're here to talk about bolt action. Uh, Paul Sawyer, um, head of Warlord's Design Studio, Alessio Cavatori, random Italian bloke. Oh, and he wrote bolt action. Sit up at the back there, come on. Dear Lord, we've got some standards, you know. So, we're just going to talk about what's, uh, what's coming up um, in the next few months uh, and one or two other sneaky things. So, first up, uh, let's talk about the upcoming books. So we've got three books coming up in the next few months. The first of which is a campaign book based on Stalingrad. We all know how iconic that particular battle is, city fights, and all the rest of it. So that's been written by Alexander Smith. Uh, he's done a cracking job of it. So expect um, a really, really big book. Uh, loads of new units, loads of new selectors, uh, and we might even have a big battle set in it for you as well. The other two books we've got coming through are one for the Pacific for the island hopping campaigns, the US, uh, and that's the Mariana and Palau Islands campaign. Anybody who's seen um, the Pacific TV series will be very familiar with it. So we're talking Saipan, Tinian, Pele Lu, all the classics. And the third one uh, is a second in our trio of books for, for D-Day. The first book we had, which just been released, uh, focused on the airborne assault and the landings on June the 6th, and ended at the end of that day. The s second two books uh, that we've got coming out uh, will focus on the breakout from D-Day and finish at the end of the Falle Gap. So uh, the first book we're covering the Anglo-Canadian sector, so the British and the Canadians breaking out through Khan. All the uh, operations you'd be familiar with, uh, Epsom, etc. And uh, we're currently having the third book um, commissioned at the moment. So those are the big three books. Obviously, there's loads and loads of miniatures coming through. Um, uh, plastic, resin and metal for all of those books, as well as you know, a number of other uh, projects we've got on the, on the go. Uh, right, so um, another thing that we talked about recently at the, um, at the Warlord Open Day seminar uh, was Bolt Action 3rd Edition. So, um, Alessia, when we finish um, putting out a, the first edition of a game, or you know, any new edition of the game, is it fair to say that work really begins in some way on the following edition? Absolutely. I mean, a big part of what I do is to, when the new edition comes out, is obviously to looking after the FAQ and errata for the duration of the life, the shelf life of the product. And that obviously gives a good measure of, you know, if there's anything that needs changing or if not, you know, it accumulates, you know, an, an interest and it develops through the years. And like in the first edition to second edition, there was no hurry. We felt the system was fine as it was. So it carried on for many years. Then we thought we made the decision of second edition. But, you know, there is no urgency, need. You know, the, the, there's nothing broken with Bolt Action, so there is no hurry of going for a new edition of Bolt Action. Said that, of course, we always, I mean, I accumulate the things and we, we discuss things. We, you guys send us feedback, discuss things you like, things you don't like, things you prefer in first edition or second edition, things you would like to see in a future edition. So that is an organic process that continues all the time after, after a game is produced. When a company decides to, that it's time to do the, the next edition, you know, it varies enormously in, for reasons, timing, it was, and for both action, as far as I know, I mean, unless you haven't told me, there are no, no conversation of anything happening in the next, I don't know, how many years. So. Well, cer certainly not in the next year, um, probably not in the next two years. Um, we're very happy with the way Bolt Action works at the moment, um, but there comes a time with any game system uh, where it needs refreshing. Um, both in terms of the system, the looks, and the finer details. Uh, another thing we've got going on, aside from not third edition, is um, organised gameplay. One of the things that we're developing at the moment um, uh, is a, a website and a system of organised gameplay for our games. We'll be rolling that out over uh, coming months. Uh, you can head to the uh, website, which is play.warlordgames.com, and check that out. We'll be kicking that off with Korea, which is the next book to be released, which is out in August. Uh, it focuses on the Korean War, so it's the first book that we've done that's outside of World War II. Uh, it's long been something myself and, and John Stallard have wanted to um, have a go at. 
well, it's referred to as the forgot, Forgotten War, uh, and really it's the Forgotten War game, because nobody really does it. Well, I've certainly not done it in 28 mil in any, uh, in any big way, and uh, we wanted to change that. Obviously, one of the, uh, the key benefits there is it's just after World War II, so a lot of the kit, a lot of the um, uh, troops um, all work with late World War II. So if you've got a late war American army, chances are the majority, if not all of it, works perfectly in Korea. Uh, we'll be developing and releasing more stuff that's specific to Korea, so M46 uh, Patton tanks, um, Centurion tanks, uh, BTR-40s for the communists. All of that layered on, layered on to uh, existing uh, nationalities. Uh, but obviously we have to do completely new rangers, such as the communists, the Chinese PVA, and the North Korean KPA, uh, and we're leading out of the uh, out of the blocks with um, the North Koreans. So expect to see those released alongside the book, the Chinese to follow shortly after. Well, there you have it. Uh, we'll be bringing you more updates in the future, but for now, pip pip. <laughs>